Can you beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by the Crash Man? As the name implies, the Crash Man is an individual who spawns into the world the instant you boot up the game and his sole purpose is to track down the player and talk with them which will result in the game crashing. Unlike all the other chase runs I've completed thus far, the best part about the Crash Man is that there is no setup required to get him to come after you, so the minute the game begins, the challenge is already underway and I need to be quick on my feet to avoid the psychopath. The rules are the same as they have been in the past for these runs. No fast travelling as it defeats the purpose of being chased, and of course if he catches me, or in this case if he causes the game to crash, the run will be over as I only have one shot at this. On the bright side, depending on how you look at it, the Crash Man is invincible, meaning I never need to worry about him dying, so I won't need to do the usual save the game, pause the challenge, and then wait to make sure he's still in hot pursuit. This mod was created by KM Fallout, who was kind enough to reach out to me and provide me a link to the mod after it was removed from the Nexus. That link is in the description, should any of you wish to give this mod a go yourself. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Things begin as normal, a horrible headache followed by redesigning your skin suit and figuring out what makes you so unique in this bleak world. The major difference is that I have never been so tense in the tutorial as I can only assume the Crash Man has already spawned and is making his way straight for Good Springs. I believe he spawns up near Jacobstown, so at the very least I have a short amount of time to get things ready before I head out. My special stats are about what they usually are for these kind of videos. As there are no restrictions to my build, I go with a melee oriented character as that's my favourite way to play New Vegas. Despite what it says, agility doesn't actually increase your overall movement speed, but I still put a single point into it so that I can take the travel light perk for a 10% speed increase once I hit level 4. For my tag skills I go with melee weapons, survival and medicine. Resting in beds to heal is not advised, so I'll want to get as much use out of stim packs as possible, and then survival for the previously mentioned travel light perk as it needs to be 45 to get it. Finally for traits I go with heavy handed and skilled. I have obviously attempted very similar runs to this in the past, so by now I have a pretty good understanding of what to do to get the best start I possibly can think of. First I make my way over to Chet's and buy some leather armour for just a little bit of protection. When those transactions are finished I make my way out of Good Springs in the direction of Sloan and stop off in the abandoned shack as there's always a free golf club here just waiting to be taken. Following my current path and I'm jumped by a giant rat scorpion. Initially I was planning to club him to death for the experience but it became clear very quickly that not only would this be a waste of time, which is something that I can't have enough of in this challenge, but also he was doing so much damage that I didn't want to burn through my healing supplies and risk my armour's condition as I wasn't sure when I'd be able to get more of each. It's not all bad though. I may not be able to take down Papa Scorpion, but that doesn't stop me from heading over to the Hidden Valley and taking out all of his bark based cousins. Marking locations on the map is ultimately pointless due to the no fast travelling rule, so it should become quite clear that the reason I'm here is to deal with the Brotherhood at the beginning to cut down on as much backtracking as possible. As I murder the centaurs and grab the hollow tape and power armour, now would be a very good time to mention that I'm siding with the NCR today. I know that since I've done these chase runs before for each of the other factions, this time I should have sided with Caesar. But the thing is, from what I know of the game and some testing I did prior to beginning this run, I'm pretty certain that the people who follow you like this cannot cross the barge and make it to the fort. That means that while I'm working for Caesar, there'll be segments of the run where I'm essentially not being chased, and that didn't sit right with me. I chose to go with the NCR over Yes Man and House because I figured they'd have the most stuff to do to keep things interesting. Anywho, after the last of the centaurs goes down, I mosey on over into the bunker, get kidnapped, and then persuade the ranger to leave by going full caveman on his radio. Congratulated for my savage ways, I am given free reign of the base, and I immediately abuse those privileges as I feel around in the pockets of the important people to grab the self destruct codes. Well, I don't actually steal the card from Harden. Rather, I take his super sledge he leaves on display and cave his head in and take it the old fashioned way. I made sure to do it stealthily too so that I wouldn't have the whole might of the Brotherhood bearing down upon me. After the base was set to blue I put the sledge to good use and feeling a little overconfident I thought that I could take on some of the paladins for some easy experience. I was wrong. I may have great offence but let's keep in mind I'm still only wearing some highly damaged leather armour so defence is not something I have a lot of for the moment. It's not a huge setback as on the next attempt I just dart past them and rejoice as the Brotherhood is no more. Wanting to keep at my current pace the next logical direction would be heading through the Black Mountain shortcut but after taking out a few centaurs that I appear to have missed I advanced to level 3 and considering how close I was to the Black Mountain radio tower decided to instead scale the mountain, battle the Nightkin, rescue Raoul and then fight and kill Tabitha and her guards to finish the crazy 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 quest granting me more than enough experience to hit level 4 and thus giving me access to the travel light perk. 
To be honest, I actually got enough experience here that I leveled up again and maxed out my melee weapons, so in terms of raw killing potential, I am set for the rest of the run, so all I need to do now is focus on healing supplies and armour. With Tabitha dead, I skipped down the mountain avoiding most of the mutants and made my way for the shortcut. On the way, I found some turbo next to a briefcase, and given the nature of the run, I can only imagine how handy it could be, especially with dealing with the casinos. Right, so naturally, the NCR questline has its complete quest for two major players, those being Ambassador Crocker on the Strip and Colonel Murder at Hoover Dam. All of their quests have us travelling back and forward across the Mojave, so to do things as fast as possible, it makes sense to complete all of their quests now, so that I can turn them in one after another without the fear of coming across our PC-destroying friend. Because I know you've all enjoyed this the last few times that I've done it, here is a map to show the exact route I'll be taking to accomplish my tasks in the most efficient way possible. After I make it through the shortcut, I'm going to head northwest for a bit to come closer to Camp McCarran, and from there head west towards Red Rock Canyon to deal with the cans. Once they're out of the way, I will then begin heading northeast all the way up to Nellis to see the Boomers, as it makes more sense than seeing the Ambassador first, and then going back and forth. Afterwards, I will head down into Freeside, where I'll make a quick pit stop to see the Kings, before advancing into the Strip to deal with the O'Murders and Benny. Next, I will speak with Crocker, finishing his quests, deal with House, and from there all my tasks should be finished, meaning all that's left is to head to the dam and then turn them into the Colonel and proceed to the end of the game. Outside of Camp McCarran, I help my fellow NCR with the nearby fiends. Not so much to help the soldiers, but to get the fiend armour, because after my scrap with Tabitha, my leather armour is almost completely destroyed. It's light armour as well, which is good as it means I still get the bonuses from Travel Light, the only downside is that it's not all that great. Beggars can't be choosers though, so it's off to the cans. The cans in the longhouse were never going to escape that room alive, being as tightly packed in as they were, it would have been more impressive for me to not hit anything while swinging wildly. Usually, taking out the cans in and around the longhouse is enough for the NCR, but I really didn't want to risk having to come back here again, so I made the effort and time to go around the camp and dispatch every single last can that I could find. Some of them can hit hard, especially those with trail carbines, but as soon as I managed to close the gap, the battle was over. One good thing about masquering the cans like this is that you gain access to a sizable number of drugs that will no doubt come in handy later. I was fortunate enough to find another 4 turbo here, bringing my total up to 5, which makes just about any build overpowered with that amount of slowdown. With the last can reduced to jam, I continued on my path towards Nels. I made a brief stop along the way to take out Violet and her pack for seemingly no reason. I had no intention of ever setting foot in Camp McCarran, so I suppose this was just for the small amount of experience that I was absorbed from them. As you all know by now, my ability to stay focused is horrendous, as rather than heading straight for Nellis and keeping myself ahead of the crash man, I made two more stops along the way for more supplies that I really did not need. First off, I went to the Gunrunners and purchased myself a reinforced Mark II combat helmet for added protection, as well as taking the time to sell a good chunk of the loot I took from the Brotherhood and the cans. I then took most of these caps over to the New Vegas Clinic and spent it on stim packs and doctor's bags. I wasn't expecting a tough fight from the Boomers or anything, this was more just a stock up for the rest of the run. George gets what he deserves when I make it to the outskirts, and from there I just use a single turbo and run along the rock wall to ensure I don't get smacked up by the artillery strikes. Come to think of it, since the crash man cannot die and would likely not make it through the bombardment due to constantly getting knocked out, I really could have taken as much time as I needed in Nels. That is basically my way of saying that I probably could have helped them out if I wanted to, but to hell with that I say, as Pearl, Raquel and anyone standing in a 4 foot radius gets a face full of metal. I grab a grenade launcher from the corpses while I'm here, as I know the guards by the gate can prove troublesome without ranged weapons. Argyle gets a visit and I put him and his patients out of their misery before turning my attention to Loyal, who I kill by slamming into his ceiling, followed by stuffing his body behind his desk so no one will ever find him. I may not be able to take out Pete, but that doesn't stop me from stealing his snow globe just to be an ass. As for Jack, well I leave him alive as now all his friends are dead and there is no way he'll be able to meet Janet, which is probably a lot worse for him than anything I could do. Heading for the exit, and as expected, I am assaulted with explosions, crippling my limbs. Although, to be fair, my horrible accuracy with ranged weaponry is to blame for my broken arm in this instance. One of them actually goes down easy enough. It was his friend who proved to be troublesome, as he was able to knock me down, and blow up a car behind me for maximum damage. He could have very easily finished the job, but for whatever reason, he decided to close the gap between us and pulled out a melee weapon. No clue why he did that, but I'm certainly not going to complain, as it allowed me to survive the fight, take him down, and then leave Nellis for good, and finally make my way for Vegas by way of Freeside. The plan was to enter through the North Gate, hit the Kings, and then proceed to the Strip. The mod, however, had other ideas. Turns out that I spent longer in Nelson than I anticipated, as just after making it past the remains of George, I saw the Crashman approach me on the horizon. Heading straight for the Strip now would spell the end of the run, so I would need to kite him around for a bit to buy some time. Fortunately, I don't plan to spend more than a few minutes in Vegas and Freeside, so I should be okay. 
To create some distance between us, I started by heading south down past Durable Dunn's sacked caravan, as knowing how NPCs work in these games, he would more than likely have to cross the bridge there, and thus help separate us. I then continued south for a bit before heading west, and then back up into Freeside by the gate near the Gunrunners. I ran past everything and just made my way straight for the Kings, where I was in and out in less than a minute, as I sweeped Pacer's leg for a quick kill, followed by the King himself for his snazzy suit, as it currently offers more protection than my bombarded Fiend outfit. Thanks to selling the power armor and laser weapons before, I have over 2,000 caps, allowing me to enter the strip with no hassle. First stop is of course Gamora, and while I do go on a spree here, as I can't not after all, I do so well under the effects of Turbo, so that I can save as much time as humanly possible. After I'm done bathing in the blood of my enemies, I do it again over at the tops, where it is even easier due to them generally not being as well equipped as the Omertas. Everyone goes down to a single strike except Benny, who takes a whopping two hits before being sent to the much deserved grave. I technically did not need to come in here as you don't need to take out Benny or get the platinum chip to progress through the NCR questline, but having the chip lets you bypass the computer terminal to get to Mr. House, so it's worth spending the extra few seconds here to come and get it. Once I leave, I have a mild heart attack as I thought Voltbase here was the crash man and that the run had failed. For scaring me like that, I hit him with a juggle combo before being approached by the real messenger and then I hightailed over to the NCR embassy. Despite my rep with the NCR, this random asshole approaches me and demands that I give him money. Not wanting to start a fight that would lead to me destroying the NCR in its entirety, I just pay the man some money before going to speak with his superiors about more important matters. Ambassador Crocker, being a man of peace, is not best pleased when he finds out I resolved the situation with the Boomers and Kings via assassination and absolute carnage. Therefore, I fail both tasks successfully, allowing me to work with the Colonel of the Dam. As mentioned, before heading to the Dam, I make a quick stop at the Lucky 38 to destroy the Segway robots and Mr. House. If they ever remaster this game, they should maybe give House more than like four guards. With everything finished on the strip, it was time to head south towards the dam. This time I leave Freeside by the north gate, as I have this sinking feeling that if the crash man is hot on my heels, then he is more than likely about to enter Freeside via the other gate, and I am not taking any chances walking right past him. Heading south and I come across a trader, and as luck would have it, she is selling reinforced leather armour. Better late than never I suppose, so I buy it from her, and after realising it's less than stellar condition, I murder her for her armour, so that I can patch it up. I take the pipes as I travel and stick to the high ground, as that always seems to throw the AI off their rhythm, as they find it hard to track you in areas that are above ground with no visible ways to get to them. Because I just can't help myself, I resolve the issue in Boulder City before heading to the dam, because I am so close to level 12, and I want that piercing strike perk for maximum killing efficiency for my build before reaching the legend. Naturally, these cans fare no better than the last, and I am in and out in no time at all, with a couple hundred more XP to boot. It's a short walk from here to the dam, and as such it's not long before I surprise the colonel by telling her that it just so happens every single problem she's ever had was completed ahead of time. She thanks me for my work, and I get to helping Grant with the assassins. We all know how this goes, you just wait for the sniper by the manhole, and once you and the ranger take care of him, you just head on down and steal the detonator off the legion disguised as an engineer, and just like that, the day is saved and it's time for the final battle. I also leveled up here getting me the piercing strike perk, and as a result, most of the cannon fodder legion go down to one well placed smack. Even better is that most of them carry super sledges of their own, so I can keep mine in peak condition throughout the assault. As mentioned many times in the past, I don't think NPCs can follow you into the final battle, but given the crash man is no normal NPC, I don't take the chance and continue to move ahead at a quick pace. Making it to the Legates camp and I dose up on Medics and Psycho just to hammer home the power difference between all of us. I also bully the Legate by combining that with some turbo, allowing me to knock him down almost immediately, resulting in a quick and clean kill before you can even figure out what's actually going on. I then used the last of the drug's effects to take out his guards, and due to finishing him off so quickly, he didn't even have a chance to call in his reinforcements. I then approach the gate, and the sight of General Oliver not only causes me to level up and turn gay, but it finishes the game, proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by the Crash Man. Out of all of my chase videos, this was by far the fastest, clocking in at just under 2 hours, as opposed to the usual 3 or 4. I am willing to chalk that up to having experience with these runs by this point, as well as the fact that the Crash Man doesn't require any setup outside of installing the mod, so the challenge begins as soon as you start the game. The added anxiety of the game crashing at any moment oddly made this really enjoyable. Again, a huge thank you to KM Fallout for creating the mod and making this video possible. As mentioned, there's a link in the description if you want to test it out yourselves. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider the video a like and turn some more challenges in the future. If you subscribe, so I don't need to visit every week. Mine's nervous. I say, everyone, I'll see y'all in the next video.